Hello, this is Jim Pulsifer from NAMM Show 2011 on Friday, January 14th, and I'm here with Christian Hotstot from Magneto Guitars, and we're going to ask him a few questions here for CustomGuitarBoutique.com. Is this your first year at NAMM, Christian? Uh, well, actually, no. Um, it's it's my second year with Magneto, but all in all, it's probably the twentieth time I come here to uh, to the NAM show. So you've worked for other companies. Yeah, I'm some with other companies. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been I've been working in this business for uh, it's my twenty first year here. So I'm doing guitar specific. And what brings you to to NAM this time? Well, um, the main reason is to hook up with a few um, with a few musicians and a few uh, a few friends, and actually also people from all over the world, which uh, wanted to meet and to test the guitars. And just uh, since you've been to NAM for so many years, what do you think is the biggest change from, let's say, twenty years ago versus now? Um, I think what I've noticed on the first day, um, what what really um, hit me is the fact that s some people, especially the high-end makers, um, do not show their guitars this year, which is uh, um, it's a little bit of pity. But yeah, to, to come back to your question, the, um, the main change uh, is that I find that most of the instruments displayed here do effectively come from one and the same country, <laughs> right? And uh, and um, which is you know, um, it's positive and, and negative. It's just uh, uh, it's good because you get you get gear for 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 you know effectively a cheaper price. But um, a lot of the knowledge uh, goes lost with this system. Where where do magneto guitars come from? We're in Japan. We are uh, so you're a little different from the vast majority of present-day manufacturers. Yeah, well, I've got a little bit of a special history here, but um, I've been uh, making guitars with uh, with uh, my friends in Japan for uh, now 17 years, and wow. um, we've always been. You know, it's 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 a bit difficult to explain because um, Japan is actually right now um, you can only produce high-end guitars due to the labor costs but on the other hand the, my friends and, and myself we, we knew that there was a possibility to make high-end guitars because Japan has always been known to for the entry level from you know come, came from the 60s mm -hmm. um, but not so uh, much anymore though right not so much anymore and a lot of people have done their homework uh, uh, properly and I've been participating on the, on the evolution if I may say so, uh, by working on, on and developing ideas mm -hmm. with my Japanese friends. Well, let's take a look at this guitar that that, yeah, uh, sure. that uh, we're, we have here. I was playing this when I came in, and it just yeah. plays fantastic. By the way, I'm very yeah, impressed well, with it. It it plays fantastic. You. I can't. I haven't heard it, but uh, acoustically, it sounds sounds fantastic. Tell me what what sets this apart from other guitars of similar style. Well, basically, uh, we call it, uh, I like to call it a, a retro-modern concept because um, we try to take a lot of the influence from the, uh, from the early 50s uh, and, bring, and bring them into, uh, um, literally into 2011 because um, a, lot, a lot of the style in it is classic, yet there's, there's uh, many twists into that. And the, the most important one is that we, we try to, to create an instrument um, that is basically balanced differently. We put less mass in the body. Uh, it's a little bit of smaller uh, uh, body than, for instance, a standard tele would be. Why don't you turn it sideways just to, to see? So it's about the same width though, isn't it? But it's less... Yeah. less but yep. a little bit less wood total. It's you, you, you know, if you compare it to a tally, there's less on the the, the, the shoulder here. There's mm -hmm. there's more on on the horn, and there's a little bit less uh, here too. And that but makes a difference in weight. It, in a it's bit. the important difference comes from the fact that um, due to that new balancing, you you put a stronger emphasis on the mid range frequencies, which is uh, actually where we wanted to go. So we made quite a few tests before we got there and I was always fond of uh, small guitars 
Um, if you go too small in a body design, it's not people would not like it, but it's interesting in terms of the the, the tone to get out of it. So this would have less mid range or more mid range than more, definitely more mid range. More mid range. A, they, the best way to explain it is you raise uh, the complex mid range frequencies. And um, and you have a little bit less basses and a little bit less of the uh, high treble, which which is exactly where I wanted the where I wanted it to be, because I mean the basic idea comes from speaking to a lot of sound engineers who t who are telling me I need to put a low pass on the on the electric guitar signal on almost every mix. Mm -hmm. So this is how the idea grew. You know. I see. What's the what's the configuration on this guitar? I, I see you have a traditional bridge, but they look like they're compensated saddles. Yeah. So so speaking the, speaking about the um, the bridge, mm -hmm. um, okay. we 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 are working with the brass saddles to to maintain the uh, the classic tones, and this is I believe very important. Yet we wanted the guitar to intonate perfectly. Mm -hmm. So um, we have those brass saddles that are made uh, uh, for us. Uh, by Goto, but have been designed by a friend called Trevor Wilkinson, which mm -hmm. is you know well known in the industry. Wilkinson, yeah, sure. Yeah, and the um, the um, the plate is actually a, a design of ours, where you know we change uh, uh, um, some areas of the traditional uh, to get out of the way of the player to get out of the way of the player to make it to make it easier. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, the um, in terms of pickups, um, we like to go uh, new ways too. You know, we, we we try to keep away from the very traditional configuration. So what we have here is a telebridge pickup, but wound with more mid-range, so slightly overwound. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the result is less treble because mm -hmm. we combine it on the neck with a P90 pickup. Uh, which ultimately is, uh, you know, traditionally quite uh, uh, mid-range heavy, mm -hmm. but uh, this one we underwound it mm -hmm. by about, you know, five to ten percent, and uh, this gives, you know, um, a little bit more of higher mid-range. Now these are two single coil pickups. Do, do they? Hum do they? Oh, they're not. They are. They are. They do are. they humbuck in the center position? Yes. Uh, or reverse one, yes. reverse polarity. So yep. if you're in the center, then you will have no hum. Yeah. But point, yeah. uh, basically, what we do is we work with very standard uh, pickup configuration. So we're not trying to eliminate the hum because every attempt that has been done so far does also take away some of the magic of the real it really single does. Course. Yeah, yeah. And what we do, on the other hand, is uh, we try to uh, uh, create a real Faraday cage on the inside, meaning that we use dotite spray, you know, to um, to. To you know, to keep the uh, the pickups as quiet as possible. And this is um, you. Uh, we talked about this before. It's nitro. Uh, yep. The 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 paint is nitro. Yeah. Well, what the um, the finished. concept is simple. All the bodies of all our guitars are finished uh, uh, with uh, with nitro. Which is you know most people will say better resonance than a than a polyester finished guitar. A polyester Absolutely. finished guitar will bottle up the sound. Correct. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are uh, we wanted to go um, wanted to do this for that specific reason, bearing in mind that nitro is probably not the most solid uh, uh, finish, but it's definitely the best thing in terms of sound. Yes. We use a different approach on the neck uh, uh, for for obvious uh, uh, reasons. Um, we use a thin urethane, which mm -hmm. we can go satin. Um, we can go very thin with this one. Um, we like to use it because it feels it feels great, mm -hmm. and it is it does, solid. It does. You know, it is very solid, and we because this is ultimately the area where which you touch the most. So you know, this we found out this is absolutely the um, the the best finish we could use for that. And it has the.